Hello everyone, my name is Victor Oeman and in this video I want to show you how to create an entirely custom surface by sculpting a straight and quick tool mixer. I'll be creating one sculpted base that I'll use for three entirely different material types. Let's get going! For this example I'll use a couple of custom brushes. To load brushes all you have to do is to create a new paint layer in which you click the brush swatch right here. This opens up an explorer window in which you specify the brush. Next click open and it's ready to be used. All of the brushes used in this video are available for free download in the video description below. What I have here is a paint layer in which I'll paint in the displacement layer. I'll be using this boulder brush to simply stamp out the base shapes that I'm looking for. And as you can see here I'm already getting a very believable and interesting result. And everything you paint in the mixer automatically tiles so you don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and add a material. I'll start off by loading a stone material to help me define the base and I'll be creating a sandstone or desert type material first so this one will be perfect. I'll increase wrap to base to make sure it follows the base I just sculpted. And as you can see the material definition from the rock material is also retained making it blend in nicely with the sculpted details. So let's add some sand that will accumulate in the crevices. I'll just need to adjust the color slightly. There we go. The non-destructive nature of the mixer really comes in handy when sculpting, allowing you to go back at any time to edit and adjust the sculpt you've made. Here I'm adding some more volume using another brush. You can also adjust the displacement layer's strength and opacity at any time. The mixer allows you to sculpt in multiple layers, which allows you to control different features independently of each other, allowing for some really cool effects. Here I'm adding some smaller rocks and boulders. And you can control the size of the brush by holding B and middle mouse button dragging. I really like how these rocks break up the sand. I'll just go ahead and tweak the two layers intensity before moving on. I'll just tweak the sand's blending and the interaction and I'll adjust the reflectance value slightly. By adjusting remove base details you get the power to control the influence of the underlying surfaces. In the case of the sand I want to reduce that influence by dragging the slider up. By adjusting the influence of the sculpt layers you can get some really nice happy accidents so I definitely recommend playing around with that. Let's use this base to create the complete opposite of this. A snowy terrain material. I'll switch out the stone material for something that'll work better as a granite type surface. And after adjusting the reflectance values I think this works really well. And luckily for me there are snow scans available in the library. So I'll just grab this one that I already had downloaded. For the snow I don't want the base details to come through so I'll get rid of those, making the snow look much more soft and puffy. I'll also add a snow layer on top of the rocks. What I want is for a sliver of the rock to shine through between the snow layers. There we go. I'll go down to the sculpt layers and just tweak them quickly. The final thing I want to add to this surface before moving on to the next are some twigs and clutter. I'll load that as a tileable atlas. I'll adjust the blending a bit and there we go. For the third and final surface I want to go a bit closer to home. Let's create a nordic forest floor material. As before I'll remove the layers and adjust the base stone reflectance values. I'll be using a few more layers in this material than the previous ones, but it's the exact same workflow and really nothing advanced at all. The first thing I'm doing here is to add a grass material as a base, on which I'll load a moss material. I will blend the moss in the deeper parts of the surface and have the grass appear around the edges of the rocks. Next I'll load some pine needles that I'll blend with the moss. And after adjusting the blending a bit they look right at home there. I found that when working with forest floors especially it's very important to work with many layers of vegetation. Different ground growers, living layers, dead layers and so on. The rocks are looking a bit chilly so let's drop some moss on them. I'll just set the blending mode to from above instead. Next I'll add a tileable moss atlas to break things up a bit. I really love this material, it's extremely handy. 
If you're not entirely happy with the placement of a material, you can both adjust the repetitions, the offset in both axes, as well as the rotation. I think it's really getting close. Let's just add another tileable atlas with some twigs in it to add some more layering. There we go. Let's also change the lighting to something a bit softer. Perfect. And just as before, regardless of how many layers you add, you can always go back and edit both your material layers as well as your original sculpt. And that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you learned something and as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of new videos and tutorials. And don't forget to tune in to our regular live streams. My name is Victor Oehmann and I'll see you next time.